This is going to be a little different of a vlog because I'm out at the lake this weekend and uh, just spending some time relaxing and, and reflecting on work and life and what I'm doing. Having a Bob's Oktoberfest. I kind of wanted to just talk about, back to what I did on that live stream a couple weeks ago called uh, The Emotional Journey of Creating Anything Great. And I want to just do a little part two on that because the first time I just really explained the concepts. I think that's wonderful thinking and it's really helped me a lot. But today I just want to talk about the nitty gritty of that because I'm in the middle of that right now. Um, it happens to me on, on most, most projects. I don't say all because there are some I can just knock out. But most projects, especially the ones that I have any sort of emotional involvement with, it, it really begins to happen to me. I doubt my skills, I doubt my gifts, I doubt what I know to be true. And just because the project has gotten hard, it's like I give up, I give up the confidence I have. It is not a conscious thing that happens. It is very much a very deep uh, emotional reality that no doubt begins to happen when you're when you're in those places so if anything with with that kind of like creeping depression that 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 comes into your workflow it's good to just get away so hence why we came out here now i'm out here with the fam getting some good relaxed time my wife and daughter and the dog georgia uh, but the lake is just like the most peaceful place for me. This is where I feel like my soul begins to recharge if it gets too overloaded. Especially with these feelings of uh, of the pit of despair. Because if you remember that, that, that chart I talked about, like whenever you start a new project, you start way up here and you're excited about it, you're pumped about it, you're confident, you're ready to just jump right in. And then as you start the project, you start sinking into what, what is called the pit of despair, where you think that everything sucks, you think you suck, you think it was a waste of time, it's a joke. People are gonna laugh at you. You know, you think all those really negative thoughts. And then at the, the only way out of that pit of despair is to continue moving and you start to get better and better and better till you get to this place where you're like, hey, this project isn't that bad. Maybe I'm not that bad. And then you get all the way up to the very top again, which is, is greatness. It's excellence. It's, it's uh, the best of your abilities. But you have to go through that emotional low point to get through to the other side. And I'm in the middle of a project right now that means a lot to me. It's a video project. Um, and there's some music things as well that are doing this, but it means a lot to me. I just, I just want it to be really, really good. And that pressure that I put on myself makes me feel this ambivalence of I can't continue moving forward or uh, I start to doubt what I'm doing. I start to doubt who I am and uh, it makes me want to quit. And you know what? The last 10 years of my life before I started doing professional video and music in 2014 was riddled with falling into that pit of despair where you want to give up and then giving up and not following through, not finishing anything. That was a really, really bad place for me for, for many years because I had all these dreams of, of being a musician. Of Honestly, filmmaker wasn't really in there, but that's what I always did and I would have said yes to that years and years ago. I went to college for music and uh, ended up leaving, dropping out and going back to a regular school and studying studying geography. All because of those fears and those feelings in that pit of despair. And I just really love what Simon Cade said. He's uh, the, the guy from DSLR Guide on YouTube. I really appreciate him and his vulnerability when he talks about this kind of stuff. He said something to the effect of, those who make it are the people who feel the sting of their inadequacies and yet continue to move forward. So with all that being said, I really had this theme of, uh, I have a couple themes that I, that I stick to or I don't know, life statements or uh, mantras that I, that I kind of stick to when I'm in these places of, of doubting everything. And one of them is the only way out is through. And that really applies to every part of my life, just meaning there's no shortcuts, there, there is nothing glamorous about the process of getting better. The only way out is going through the hell that you're in. And uh, the, the glory on the other side can only be achieved if you go through that. When you're in that pit of despair, and it feels like there's no way out and it feels like everything you're doing is a waste of time and you doubt your skills and you doubt your talents, at least I do, the only way out of that is hard work. You have to work and work a lot. The hard work is the only way you close the gap between who you are and who you want to be, what you're capable of and what you want to be capable of. But uh, it's the same for that pit of despair when you're in a dark place. The only way to not quit is to work and to work hard. But sometimes hard work in that place can be really, really challenging, at least it has for me until I realized that 
self-discipline doesn't happen until you have a clear and direct and a beautiful vision for what you want. What you want out of life, what you want from your career, what you want your skills to be. And if you have that vision, I'm talking like long term, like this is who I'm going to be. No one can stop me from being this. That was what gives you self-discipline. And when I have those types of visions, you know, like if I have a long-term vision that says I'm going to be a successful composer, I'm going to be a successful filmmaker in any way, shape, or form, no one can tell me no and no one can stop me, then uh, that gives me a lot of self-discipline when I'm in a dark place. So I think that's really important. Keep that in mind. Do you like my hat? I bought this in Seattle at a Walmart. No one's stopping you, man. Don't listen to any negative advice if somebody tells you that you shouldn't do something. Just to shut out those negative voices and say, you know what? I'm me. No one else in the whole f***ing world is me. And no one can be as me as I can. And if I'm not being me, then the world is at a loss. Because the world needs me, just like the world needs you. Alright. Be sure and hit like and subscribe. Be sure and leave a comment so we can talk. Follow me on Twitter. And I will see you next week.